Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lucy Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth, and it's Saturday, so it's time for Friday Reads. <laughs> I had wanted to film this yesterday, and I just didn't get it done, but it's basically the same video, even though today is already Saturday. I'm going to tell you about the books that I have finished this past week leading up through Friday, and what I'm currently reading, and what I plan to get to as I continue to finish the books that I'm currently reading. So it is almost mid-month. Well, not quite, but almost. It is the 12th. So September started, I think, on a Tuesday. Is that correct? So for the first four days of September, I only finished one book, and I already talked about it. It is The Book of Three by Lloyd Alexander, the first book in the Chronicles of Pridane. So since then, I have finished four more books, and believe it or not, of the five books I've finished this month, three out of the five have been in print. Yay! And that is because, two things, I started them the previous month, so I have not had to read all of those from beginning to end. And also, my reading has kind of shifted a little bit this month, and, um, and not completely in a bad way. So I have been having more time for print books and less time for audiobooks. And the reason for that is Emily, even though you guys, if you saw my Instagram post back in May, you know, she graduated from high school. We're actually having the graduation ceremony next Saturday. So she hasn't actually got to march in her cap and gown except at church. But we're going to have the actual ceremony coming up. But she is special needs, and she goes to a school that is all special needs. And so they have an adult program that transitions kids from, you know, the high school curriculum into a continuation of that and also life skills and just things like that. And she can continue to be in the adult program with a deferred diploma until the year that she turns 22. So she's 19 now, and so she can do that for three years. But we decided to, for right now, at least this fall semester, to take advantage of the e-school learning because there's just no sense in her going to in-person school when I'm at home. My, my job is still furloughed and, well, I mean, I can, I can go and sub. I have two part-time jobs. So one of them is furloughed, my theme park job, and because I'm just part-time. And I can still sub, but I don't have to. So... It makes more sense to not expose her to any kind of potential harm right now. So she's at home and she's doing e-school learning, which means that from 9 to 2.30 with an hour off for lunch and a 15 minute break in the morning, she needs to be in front of the computer participating as much as she can in what's going on with her class. So in order for her to do that, I kind of got to hover close by. Now I can, you know, I can do a few things in the kitchen or whatnot, but I found that it's just easier if I just sit by her because I have to keep muting the mic or, you know, unmute it if we need to say something or whatever. So I'm sitting there and I can't really listen to an audiobook because I got to be listening to, you know, with one ear with what they're saying, but I can read. So I can read or I can plan or, you know, whatever. And I'm having a lot of sit-down reading time that I didn't used to have, which is kind of cool. So I have finished now three of the four print books that I carried over from August. And I am currently working on finishing the fourth one before I start anything new in print. With one exception, I've got a book club book that's got to get done my mystery book club was supposed to meet last Thursday, well, like this week, and I just wasn't ready. I just, I hadn't read the book. I still haven't. I've started it. And I don't know. I, I just, I texted everybody. I was like, could we just combine them into one meeting next week? So I really got to make sure I have the book read by next week. Anyway, so let me first, let me backtrack now and talk about the books that I finished this week. And then we'll talk about what I'm currently reading and then what I We'll start next. So the first, well, let's see. I had, I said that I carried over four books that I had already started from August. So the first one was this one, which I already talked about, the book of three. Then the next one that I finished, I kind of, I'm sort of taking them like the debt snowball. You know, if you ever do Dave Ramsey, you start with the smallest one first and then you keep working your way up. So I'm trying to think what my, um, what my next one was. Do I even have it in here? Um, wow. 
Oh, here it is. Okay. So the next one I finished was Right Package, Wrong Baggage by Wanda B. Campbell. Wow. This book, I need, I really need somebody to read this so that I can, so we can chat about it because there's just so much in this book and, uh, it, it's a Christian fiction book and at first it was really slow, like the first 30%. Then the next 10% was just maddening. I was so mad at the main female character. Ugh. And then from there, it just unfolds. There's things, there's some, you know, you think, oh, I can kind of see how this is going. But no, there's so many other things in that happen. And there's so much to unpack. And there's just so many feelings. And wow, you know, it just... I would have probably rated it five stars if it hadn't been that first 30% that was so slow that I almost put it down. In fact, I did put it down for two weeks and that's why I didn't finish it in the month of August because I, it was just that first 30% was just kind of boring, but the rest of it is not boring. Let me just tell you now, this is not going to be for everybody. It's definitely a Christian book. And if you're not a Christian, you you could read it, but you might get angry at some of the Christian approaches to things. But I am a Christian, and I got mad because of just so much of the other stuff. And the thing about it is that what this girl did and what she said, shamedly, is what a lot of Christians do and, what, and how a lot of Christians feel. And, man... <laughs> If this had been real life, I would have given her a piece of my mind. I mean, oh my goodness. And I've, you know, and had this been real life, I don't know if this relationship could have survived because it was kind of like that whole log and the twig thing, you know, don't talk about somebody's log, you know, twig in somebody else's eye when you got a log in your own. I mean, it was kind of like that, except they both had logs. <laughs> but anyway, it's it was just... Um, it was a good book, I, and I would definitely read more by this author. So, uh, so yeah, I was pleasantly surprised, but yet the reading process of it was a roller coaster for sure. So, moving on, the next book I finished in print, I loved so much. It was adorable. This is Glory by Laurie Copeland, book four in the Brides of the West series. I'm so excited to continue on. I wish I could just go ahead and pick up the next one right now, but I got all these other things I got to finish. And so I know my sister would probably say, just read what you want to read, you know, and, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. She laughed at me. Uh, you guys may have seen a comment. Uh, my sister is Sharla. So sometimes you'll see her comment to my videos. And I was saying in a previous video about you know, these things I read because I had to read them for this, that, or another, you know, and these things I read just because I wanted to. And she's like, that's all I read. It's just because I want to. And that's completely valid. But I get caught up in all these readathons and reading challenges and reading projects. And for me, that's fun. So it doesn't take the fun out of reading for me at all. But it would be fun if I could just jump in and pick up the next one. But I'm not going to. I'll make myself wait. Anyway, this is adorable. That's all I'm going to say. It's just, it's really cute. And then of the four books that I carried over, I'm not done with this one. I just picked it back up the other day and I am rereading Scarlet by Marissa Meyer and I am uh, just this far in. I think I actually just picked it back up maybe yesterday, maybe the day before. I don't know. I didn't get a lot of reading of either type done yesterday. So uh, this is very enjoyable. Okay, so now what I'm... Did I tell you about? Oh, I have then a couple of audiobooks that I finished. So th this one was from my TBR jar, Maisie Dobbs. I uh, I picked out two different fiction books out of my TBR jar the last time I did a draw, and I think now that I've done with I'm done with this one and I'm finishing up the last of the nonfiction books. I think I'm going to go ahead and do another draw before I read the other fiction draw. Because I'm on such a roll now with nonfiction and I'm really doing great. I'm just, I, I don't want to lose that momentum. So you'll be seeing a TBR jar video probably within the next couple of weeks from me. Okay, but back to this one. So I was a little bit, I don't know, hesitant to pick this up. I had, I've had it on my shelf for a while. I've heard great things about it. And for some reason, I just didn't think I was going to relate to it. 
but I totally did. And let me tell you why. I need to reach up here to my shelf and grab something that is up here somewhere. I think this is it. Hang on. Let me just pause this. I'll be right back. Okay, so Maisie Dobbs takes place right after the Great War, or World War I, and she was a nurse, and now she is uh, a private detective, or she's just embarking on that as a career. But one of the things that happens early on in this book is a mention of a retreat that is for soldiers that have been disfigured in the war. And as soon as I read that, I was like, oh, oh my goodness, I can, you know, I, I have something that I can sort of connect with because my husband has an ancestor. It was his grandmother's uncle. Now, my husband's grandmother, she lived to be 96 years old. She was fantastic. I loved her dearly. And her and I did a lot of genealogy research together. Now, she already knew a lot about her, you know, her immediate genealogy, which includes her her uncles. I don't know if she had any aunts, but she had uncles. And one of her uncles, well, her father's family was from England. And um, I just want to show you something. I have this Smithsonian magazine that is from February of 2007. And... My husband's grandmother's uncle is right here. His name is Francis Derwent Wood. And this is an article about what he did and what he was involved in after the war. It's called Faces of War. This is in the Smithsonian 2007, February 2007. Anyway, he was a sculptor in England. And he worked with the worst cases. In other words, the... The people who plastic surgeons couldn't really help. And uh, he sculpted parts, like facial parts and pieces and masks and things like that, for those people to wear whose faces were so disfigured that they didn't even, you know, they didn't want to go out in public. They didn't want to be seen. And it just helped give them a little bit of their life back. So... Whenever I'm reading Maisie Dobbs, well, I listen to it on audio, and they're talking about people who are hiding away in this retreat because they don't want to get out in public, I was like, oh, I get it. Yeah, I've seen those pictures. So anyway, it was just kind of exciting. Even though that is a very horrible thing about war, I'm just really happy that I know of someone who was a part of making it better for people who came out of that war in with disfigured faces. So anyway, uh, you can Google Francis Derwent Wood. He's got one sculpture, uh, it's a statue in Kensington Park in, uh, I guess it's in London. It's a naked soldier. Don't ask me why it's a naked soldier, but it is. I've seen pictures of it. And then he does have a statue in the Smithsonian. But I, uh, the last time we were there, which was about 18 years ago, it was not on display. It was in storage. So uh, they gave us a picture of it. But um, I don't know if any of his stuff is on display. Just interesting. An interesting point since we're talking about my husband's ancestry. That man's family, who Gigi called Uncle Frank, Uncle Frank's mother was a ma. Her last name, her maiden name was Ma, M-A-W. And the Ma's had a tile company called Ma Tile. Not original, but anyway. And they did the tile floor in the Arts and Industries building, which is, I guess, one of the oldest buildings at the Smithsonian. They were an English company, but they did that floor. And I've got pictures of it somewhere. In fact, we went, the last time we went to D.C. was when Emily was about 18 months old. So I have pictures of her crawling around on that floor that her ancestors uh, built, uh, they, they put in. So that was kind of, that was kind of neat. So anyway, let me get back to the books. I got... I'm sidetracked. So anyway, um, so now I finished Maisie Dobbs. And then the other audiobook that I finished is by J.A. Jantz. I don't, this may be the most recent. There may be one more uh, since this one. Uh, this is one of the more recent J.P. Beaumont novels called Proof of Life. And it's interesting that as J.P. Beaumont ages, he seems to get better with age. I mean, he's definitely aging and he talks about it, but... 
I think he's mellowing a little bit, but yet he's a really still a very strong character. And he's just, the, the, the author, J.A. Jantz, does a great job of breathing new life into his character, even though he's aging. And, uh, and these books are just great. I have really enjoyed um, all the J.A. Jantz books, um, almost all of them that I have read. I've got a Joanna Brady book checked out now as well, which I'm going to get to pretty soon. Okay, so then... Currently, I already mentioned Scarlet that I'm reading in print, and I have this one from Book Club, If Fried Chicken Could Fly by Paige Shelton. So I should have stopped everything and picked this up last week, and I just couldn't bring myself to do it because I really wanted to finish these four books that I had carried over from August. So I bought it on my Kindle, which I had planned to do anyway, and I thought I'll listen to it, like the text to voice. So I got about 15... 12 to 15 percent in and it just stopped it wouldn't play anymore so I put it down for a day or two and I thought I'll just try it again so I picked it back up and I got to about 30 percent and it stopped again so I don't know if, if you can just only listen to a certain amount at a time maybe it has to upload I don't know but I'm going to pick it back up I've, I've let it sit for a couple days I need to pick it back up at some point I'm going to probably have to just finish it up in print because I've got to get this red before my next book club meeting, which is this coming, this coming Thursday. We meet, you know, once, uh, the second Thursday is mystery book club. And then third Thursday is the literary book club for the literary book club. We're reading if, um, where the crawdads sing, which I've already read. So I don't need to reread that one. And then I'll, so if I, as long as I can get this one done, then I'll be ready for, um, the discussion for both of them. Okay. Then, um, I am currently listening to Glorious Appearing by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. This is the next to the last book in the Left Behind series. And I've got this one checked out. Both of these I'm listening to on Hoopla. The very last one is Kingdom Come, The Final Victory. On Hoopla, the only version that's uh, there for this one is an abridged version. But I'm okay with that. I'm fine with it. I've got about two hours left on this. I had hoped to have it done by the time I did this video. But... Uh, but it's okay. Anyway, uh, it's it's very good, except I think it's hard. I mean, I think they did as well as they could with this. But it's really hard to describe, I think, in human terms, how amazing it's going to be when Christ returns. So this book is not as exciting as I think when we're there in real life and it's really happening, I think it's just going to be incredible. But, you know, we're still human and we can't really, we can't really get that until, you know, until it happens. So, so anyway, this one's not thrilling me. It's, I feel like it should, and I feel guilty that it doesn't. But again, this is just a, this is just kind of, you know, like, this is what it could be like. We don't know until, you know, until it's happening. Then um, I am currently working on a few nonfiction books. I'm still reading A Year with C.S. Lewis, a page a day. And then my very last TBR jar nonfiction book is this little booklet by Les Feldick. And this has just, just under 100 pages, and I have just this many left. I'm just reading anywhere from three or four to seven pages a day. It's broken down into these lessons that are seven pages each lesson. So depending on how much time I have, I might read half a lesson, I might read three or four pages, or I might read the whole lesson. Anyway, I have got four lessons left. Well, it's really three lessons and each one is in four parts. So I'm to lesson three, which has four parts. Anyway, uh, I should have this done, you know, within another week and then I'll be done with all of the books for my TBR jar. There was a little booklet that went with this, and I'll read that too, but then I'm going to be ready to draw out some more books. And then I checked out a nonfiction book from the library. I have been just kind of playing with the idea of changing up how I plan and journal and all of that, because I really, I mean, what I basically do is chicken scratch. Let me find it here somewhere. I have... I've been working out of just a composition book, a repurposed composition book that my kids are done with from school, and I tear out the pages that have, you know, their stuff still on it, and I use what's left, and I've been doing this now f since I've been on BookTube, and occasionally I will tape 
you know, I'll glue a page in, a printed page, but usually I, this is just where I keep up with what I'm reading, you know, reading challenges, videos, anything bookish. And I don't know, I kind of like to step it up a little bit. Katie gave me a planner. She, she bought one that she really wanted and then she found one that she really liked better. So she's like, here, mom, you take the one that I don't want. So it's already got pre-printed stuff, but I keep seeing all these fun plan with me journals and bullet journals and all that. But I definitely know that I don't want to get into all the artsiness of it. That is just not me. I just need something practical. And, and that's really what this is. This guy, Ryder Carroll, is the one that sort of got this whole craze of bullet journaling going. Now, bullet journaling itself has been going on for ages. Back when I was doing uh, Creative Memories back in the 90s, Rhonda Anderson, who created uh, uh, Creative Memories, talked about doing bullet journaling in your scrapbooks. So that's nothing new. But what it's become has sort of become a a craze right now, a fad. And uh, I don't want to get into all the arts and crafts of it. But this guy, writer Carol, he, he doesn't get crafty. He basically just is the, he's more of a minimalist, but yet talks about just organizing a bullet journal. So I'm looking at what he does and I'm looking at some videos and somewhere in all that, I'll figure out a, something that works for me somewhere. So anyway, I may or may not read this cover to cover, but I am kind of reading through it. Then the next few books, oh dear, I just dropped one. Anyway, the next few books that I'll be picking up. So when I finish the other print books that I'm working on, then the next book I want to pick up in print is Boop and Eve's Road Trip. I actually have this one and one other book that were going to be for Summer Fling prompts. So my goal is to finish those first. And then I want to focus on a readathon that is going on this month. It is called Get Your Shelf Together, and it is from a channel called A Girl's An Average Girl's Guide to a Full Life. And uh, I did, I couldn't remember her channel name in Last Friday Reads, but I did put her information finally in the description of that video, and I'll put it uh, here again. It goes for the whole month of September, so it's not too late to do it. And I think this week I will, maybe my next video that I do after this one, I will do um, a little TBR and show you what I would like to read for each of those prompts. Now, I may not get all of those books read in September. I'm giving myself maybe till the end of October to, um, you know, to finish those, but they'll all be books that can count for the fall and to reading challenge and then in October I'm also doing the Mandiathon so I've got enough readathons to keep me busy and still do what I'm you know what I was already going to read I'm just plugging in what I was already going to read into the prompts um okay so then I've got a few things checked out on Hoopla in addition to Kingdom Come which will probably be the next Hoopla audiobook that I do I've got a couple of books checked out on audio that are in the Military Canine Unit series and this next one is by Diana Mentick called Top Secret Target and that's book three in the series then I've got another J.A. Jance book that's a Joanna Brady book I can't even remember the name of it, but I've got that checked out. And so that'll be another audiobook that I listen to. So that'll keep me busy, I think, probably for uh, the rest of this coming week. And then if I'm not back next Friday for Friday Reads, just know that next Saturday is Emily's graduation. It's also my husband's birthday, and he's, t he's taking off a few days next week. So I'm trying today to film a few extra videos that I can share with you throughout the coming week and I may not be back with a Friday reads until maybe like Sunday or Monday so like to wrap up the week and what I read so anyway that's all I have for this video I hope you're having a great day read a good book and God bless you